Put in contacts. Yeah, anyway. Are we ready? All close ups okay. and all twos. All right then. Speed. All close ups and all twos. <laughs> How many cameras do we have? <laughs> Is this one of those movies where you couldn't be friends with your co star because it's an adversarial relationship? No, I, neither Jimmy or I buy into that crap all. So. Good. So, um, no, um, no, this was great. Although I did annoy the hell out of him, and he was too intense sometimes. But um, no, we got along great, and we had a really good time. This was a, uh, this was a movie where we sat down and said, how far do we want to go with this stuff? And we both decided early on that you know, more was more, and we wanted to go just as far out as we could. And it was great because we... You know, Jimmy and I both had agendas. You know, Jimmy's was to make fun of being the world's most intense man, and mine was to make fun of being this guy who has all these great successes in in comedies, but his dramas, you know, he can't do a dramatic, can't get a dramatic film, and um, and it was a blast. You know, it was really fun. You got some great lines in this thing that I don't want to give away. People have to pay their nickel and go to the movie, but uh, involving Mel Gibson and some others. I mean, were those like in the script or this things that came up? No, we 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 improvised a lot and ad lived a lot. And um, I'm quick to point out that's not because we didn't have a good script. The better the script is, the more you, you, the freer you are to improvise and ad-lib because you have a solid foundation. You have a character that the writer has created that is really great. And then, because he's put you in such a good place, w as soon as you start to move around in the movie and start to move around in the scenes, you, everything's just pop into your head and you have to go, oh God, I gotta, I gotta take a shot here because this is great. You know, for example, that character um, when he walks into his beach house and there's a buffet laid out, well, the writer doesn't know that John Badham's going to have them lay out this big buffet, but my character has to hate that. He has to think it's not good enough. It's this is crap. What is this? Um, when you start to get into you know gift baskets that we send to each other and all of this stuff, I mean, you start to move around and you see all the opportunities you have to do it. And as soon as she said, you know, we were we're doing this thing and, and, and they had asked Mel if it was okay to use his name I guess and so she said they want to give it to Mel Gibson and I knew that John had just done a movie with Mel where he, Mel had shown his butt so I said well I'll be talking about that you think that'll be funny he said yeah Mel's got a sense of humor so it's another um, one of these butt movies or something I like yeah, that yeah. so, so there's a lot of opportunities and then you know with Brian Gumble, we did an interview with my characters on the Today Show and, and Brian Gumble, by the way was a fine improvisational actor he did that really well and, and uh, you know, so we made fun of these actors being involved in the ecological movement mm -hmm. and things like that. The fact that usually there's one out of every ten that are involved. You know, nine out of ten are really sincere about what they're doing. There's one that's saying to their press agent, you got to get me in on that, uh, you know, thing, you know, because uh, Kevin Costner's going to be there and I want my picture taken, you know. So um, as we went along, we just found more and more opportunities to take shots. I was at the uh, newsstand yesterday and you're on the cover. As you always are of something, you're on the cover of California Magazine. I didn't see that. And they're talking any. about you growing older, and they're saying, add crow's feet here, add right. this, add that. Uh, I mean, you, you're only 16 now, I think, right? 17. 17. And um, what, you know, you ever think about being a uh, no, 45, I love or you just say, I'm never going to make that far? Uh, what I really love is that, um, is that no, I, I love getting older, and, and uh, I mean, you I'm, never age. I mean, I'm, I'm, tw I'm, tw I'm 29 now, I'll be 30 next year. And... And I'm getting more comfortable in my skin. And for comedy, it's terrific because I'm finally at a place in my life where I realize I'm cooked. You know, I'm done. This is it. This is all, you know. There's not that thing when you're young where you're both arrogant and you're also saying, well, I could, you know, become this or I could be. No, I'm this is it, you know. So from a comedic point of view, that's great because I can make fun of it. I can, I can play it up. I can do whatever I want. You know, you know what I mean? And for comedy, it's... The one thing, you know, people always talk about comedy being so difficult. I, I disagree to a certain extent. Uh, I hope that doesn't sound arrogant because I'm obviously, you know, not the best at it. But, but it's, what's difficult about it is that you have to just say, I'm prepared to look like a complete jerk. And that's okay. And if you do it, people will really love it because in their lives, sometimes they're jerks. And, and they're made to feel funny about it. I talked to an actor recently said, well, you know, we don't want to do just comedy, and actors want to do drama and comedy so we can be fulfilled. What is wrong with doing something you're very good at and just being a specialist in it? Well, it's good. It's fine to do it. Um, what I find as an actor and why I do other things, I, why I sometimes do dramatic work, it's not from a Nick Lang point of view saying, you know, nobody takes me seriously. It's not about that. It's about I want to hang out a long time, 
And so I want to keep doing different things, and I don't want to keep going back to the bank. I don't want to do, you know, back to the future, back to being invisible, back to being the flying boy, back to being this. And mm -hmm. I mean, you do that nine times, well, all I'm doing is back in the car up to the bank until eventually the bank's going to be empty, and yeah. people are going to go, you took us for a ride, you know? Why can't I do that? <laughs> um, and uh, and um, so so um, you don't want to do that, and I think that I that I should try to do other things and mix it up a little bit. And then also within comedy itself, there's like reactive comedy, which is like you know Marty McFly, which is a guy yeah. who looks at all the weird things going on, and he's basically the audience's tour guide. And how he reacts is how we hope that we would react. And then there's catalytic kind of comedy where you have a guy like Nick Lang who just barges into the room like a bull in a china shop. And and then I, I'm doing the next movie that I'm that that I'll, that I have is is a romantic comedy, which is a different kind of thing. So what I'm doing now is a little like you said, I've settled back into doing comedies because I'm much more comfortable and I really like it and I think it's great. And it's easier to go home at the end of the day and play with my son when I haven't been you know dealing with the rape and murder of a Vietnamese girl. I've just been like you know throwing fake punches at Jimmy Woods. It's a lot more fun, you know. That's great. All right, thank you. Thank you. How's that old Sammy doing? He's doing great.